This fall, a new documentary film is going to change the way you see law enforcement forever. Washington, D.C., our nation's great capital. It's a historic city known for housing our federal government and providing a home for our presidents. But for millions of people, it's become a place of pilgrimage to honor our national heroes. There are monuments to past presidents, and in Arlington, a cemetery for our lost but not forgotten soldiers. But there's only one place where new names are added to be remembered every year. It's the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. Now, to honor the fallen, special access has been granted to reveal some of the stories of the past year's bravest and most courageous officers. This is, this is the house where I was shot. Um, at that point, I, I really couldn't breathe very well and had trouble keeping my balance. The shots are going off, bang, 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 bang. Suddenly, I look over to my left and I see an officer laying on the ground, he's laying on his stomach. And I didn't see the officer get shot, but I knew how he was laying, that, that he was dead. I, I knew for sure that he was dead, because he wasn't moving and he was laying face down, and that officer ended up being uh, Craig Brookholz. You, all re you realize that there's a danger, you're aware of that. But I don't think until this happened to Suzanne that I was aware as much how they face that every day. They never know when it's going to happen. Jeremy's death struck every officer throughout the country. Every one of us felt that, that vulnerability because that could have been, and it still could be, any one of us. And he was shot not because he was Jeremy Henwood, he was shot because he was a police officer in a marked police car. Today, in many armed conflicts, officers are simply outgunned. Brandon died right here. Bill actually died in that ditch right there. I saw that Brandon lying on his back um, had been shot several times and he was facing up. And I walked up to him and I stood over him, looking down at him. And my entire life just drained out of my body at that point. I was just, it was the worst day of my life. I was looking down at my son that had just been shot. And I was standing there trying to decide what I needed to do and what I needed to do as a police chief and what I needed to do as a father. While the tragedy was being felt by those at the scene, the killers were engaged in a nearby gun battle. When I started into the parking lot and the gunfire started, I immediately transitioned the rifle up into the windshield and it started towards them. The bullet started coming through the windshield. They shot this pillar out completely. Some of the rounds were coming over my head. My headrest had a bullet hole in it. I had laid across the console and was returning fire pretty much from the passenger seat. And in the picture, you can see the, the bullet holes stair-stepping coming across to the point he found where I was inside the truck. And that's where he concentrated his fire at that point. And I was doing the same thing to him. Luckily, I was able to get to him before he got to me. The fact of the matter is many officers are being outgunned by the criminals they're having to go up against. Uh, and we don't necessarily have the money today to buy our officers better weaponry so that they can match the firepower that they're having to deal with on the streets of America. And then every funeral we go to, it's just, it's, it's heart-wrenching to see the wives and the widows and the children and just the families of good people, families of good people that have to suffer because we still have scumbags out on the streets and our system fails us each and every day. At that time, I was, I was really sad, you know, I was angry. Kind of that she went in first, in a way, because she always, she always wanted to be the, the hero, you know? 
And she was the hero, but she, you know, it cost her her life, which, which really sucks. So I was kind of mad about that. But then I, I thought about it, and I understand that, you know, that's how she was. That's who she was. So. They were there. They knew they were dealing with a dangerous person, but they had to do what they had to do. And not too many people have the uh, the courage or the personality to be able to do that. This job. And I don't think you can put a price tag on that. To stand at the head of a dark alleyway, knowing that there is danger in that alleyway somewhere, and actually go and do it. It's phenomenal. It's, it's, of course it's courageous. Of course it's dedication. And of course they think about everything that they could lose. Every day, thousands of law enforcement officers across America leave their homes, not knowing if they will return. One of them will be killed in the line of duty every 54 hours.